Welcome to the Spring 2020 Virtual Convocation for Master of Legal Studies, Master of Sports Law and Business, Master of Laws, and Juris Doctor graduates of the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law at Arizona State University. Please welcome Douglas Sylvester, Dean of the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law. Good day, everyone, and welcome to the Class of 2020 Virtual Graduation Ceremony. Uh, I know this is an unusual ceremony. Uh, it's not what I'm sure many of you are really hoping for, but it is clearly the safest way for us to celebrate the end of, for many of you, your educational lives. But it's also a day where we will pledge to all of you, we're gonna have a, an in-person celebration for you to be with your families, to be with one another. As much as we're here to celebrate today all that you've accomplished to get here, we recognize that what you're really looking forward to is not hearing from me, but being able to spend time with your classmates one last time and your family. And so we here today pledge to all of you, we're gonna have that ceremony. Uh, but we don't wanna just ignore what today does represent, the final day of your time here at the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law, a day to celebrate whether you've graduated from the Masters of Legal Studies program or Masters of Sports Law and Business, the Masters of Legal Studies Online, our JD programs or our LLM, every single one of you has accomplished something truly extraordinary in your lives and you should be incredibly proud to have reached here today. We know this is an extraordinary time and it's not how anybody intended your time here to end. And as I've said, this will not be the end, but it hasn't, I think, changed any of you. And I think that's what you should all take away, that the law school may have changed a little bit, that the world has changed around you, but you are still the person we wanted to have here at this law school so that we could call you proud alums of the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law. And you have lived that life from the day you've arrived here, and I know you will continue to do it even after you've left. Every single one of you has joined this law school and decided to advance your lives and your careers because you wanted to do something for your communities and your families. And we know this about you every single year because you set records in the amount of community engagement, the amount of involvement that you have out there every year. And again, if we were ever to look at an extraordinary year where we could say to all of you graduates, boy, this is a year where you really just needed to focus on yourselves, not be as involved in the community, we totally understand, no one would judge you, but that wasn't you. You once again set records for pro bono hours and community engagement, involved in externships all over the country and around the world. Once again, this year, the graduating JD class donated more than 125,000 hours of your personal time, as many hours as any other class has really ever done. And so you should be extraordinarily proud, not just of graduating and completing your education, but really of the kinds of individuals that you have been and are becoming every single day. We are extraordinarily proud of all of you. And it isn't just about your engagement in the community. We know that a lot of this is about you and the leaders that you are gonna be in our world and amongst one another. And you have been leaders in this law school from the day you arrived and will hopefully continue to be for years and years to come. You know, we've had our highest uh, ranking ever this year. Somebody told me, I'm not quite sure that that's true, but I believe that it is. And it is all these because of classes like you who make that possible. You have been our tireless advocates out in the community. You've helped us recruit students. You've mentored uh, students in the first year and second year classes, students who've joined us in January, students who are here part-time. You haven't just been fantastic members of our broader community, you really have been the lifeblood and spirit of this law school in perhaps the most trying time we've ever had. And so we're never gonna forget this class of 2020 and you should never forget your time here. Not only have you been deeply involved in the community and been so involved in making sure this law school succeeds, you've also lived lives. And it's incredible to me every year when I think about what all of you have been able to achieve as graduates of this law school while having complicated and extraordinary individual lives. You have been interning in East Timor. You have been off to South Africa, New Zealand, Australia. You have, in the Masters of Sports Law and Business and MLS programs, you've been hockey players and basketball players and been working at Congress and all of these amazing things. You've gotten married. Some of you may have been divorced. You've had babies. You've done unbelievable things. And you, no matter where you are today, and even though you can't be with your friends today, 
should take a second to reflect on how much you've accomplished and overcome to get here and be really proud of yourselves. We are, but you need to be proud of yourselves as well. Normally in all of these ceremonies, at some point I tell you all to stand up and give a huge round of applause to your families and the faculty and the staff. Well, that's not gonna happen here today in a virtual environment, but I hope again that you take a moment to reflect on everyone who's helped you get to this day and make sure you just send them an email, set up a Zoom call, find a way to connect with those people who have been so vital to helping you through this extraordinarily difficult time and say thank you to them. Say thank you to them because you know you wouldn't be here today without the amazing staff of this law school, the faculty who have been so challenging, I'm sure at times, but have helped you really grow as thinkers and leaders in this world, and to your family and loved ones who provided the support and put up with you all of this time so that you can graduate from this law school. It is a day of celebration. It is a day of thanks. It is a day of reflection on all that you have come through to get here today. But as I've said, it's not the end. We're gonna see you again. We're going to have an in-person convocation because you deserve it. You deserve to have the same experiences despite what's happened in the world as every class who's ever come through this law school. And so keep tuned. We'll let you know when that's meant to be. I hope every single one of you can be here. And if you can't make it, let us know how we can come to you to help you celebrate becoming a graduate of the class of 2020 from the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law. Now, after me, there's a couple of speakers that are gonna be coming up. We've got uh, Joe Garagiola Jr. from the Arizona Diamondbacks is scheduled to be our convocation speaker for all of our master's programs. He's gonna give a few comments today and we're gonna make sure that Joe can be here the day we hold your actual live in-person ceremony. For our JD and LLM graduates, we have Cindy McCain, CEO of the McCain Institute, and of course, so many other amazing things she's done in this world. She again has a few comments for you today, but we're gonna make sure she can be here in person for your actual in-person graduation. I look forward to seeing you all in person that day. Until then, be proud, take care of yourselves, and welcome to becoming an alum of the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law. Thank you, Dean Sylvester. We will now move into the student convocation speaker remarks portion of our program. Please welcome our Master of Legal Studies student convocation speaker, Christy Salenga, for her remarks. She is also this class's outstanding Master of Legal Studies graduate award recipient. Welcome, Christy. Good morning, class of 2020. I'm Christy Salenga. I am very honored to be speaking at our graduation and even more so given the stressful and ever-changing obstacles we are all facing but I find so much comfort in being in it together. And we are here today celebrating a long awaited moment of accomplishment. I can't begin to understand all of the obstacles and struggles everyone else is facing right now. At least for me, especially this semester, I felt like I was drowning, drowning under my responsibilities, under my goals and under my emotions subtracting the discord and banalities of balancing life as a full-time student with a more than full-time job. I find it so uplifting to be here today with among all of you driven individuals who have pushed through and shown their grit. In these unique times in history, they are going to change us but please do not let them crush you, but to instead to expand your strengths and your resilience. We will come out of today's circumstances stronger than ever, more compassionate than ever, and certainly more grateful to those around us who have supported us tirelessly. I sincerely want to thank all of our hardworking law professors and my business school professors for all their endless support and optimism for over the past several years. And with that, I want to congratulate all of my fellow graduates. You earned this. Thank you, Christy. Please welcome our Master of Sports Law and Business student convocation speaker, Hannah Hartman, for her remarks. She is also this class's Rodney K. Smith Founders Award recipient. Welcome, Hannah. Hello, classmates, faculty, administration, friends, and families. I'm so honored to be addressing all of you on this occasion. 
Although we cannot be together in person, I'm grateful for the means we have to stay connected and celebrate our accomplishments via virtual graduation. After an exhilarating, exciting, and transformational two years as a student in Alan Bud Selig Sports Law and Business program, I've taken some time to reflect on what brought me to ASU and my time here and to ponder what is to come post-graduation. My journey started a little over two years ago. I grew up on the East Coast, graduated from the University of Notre Dame, and at the time was a sports broadcaster in Charleston, South Carolina. I was calling games for any and all teams that would have me. After realizing my heart wasn't in it, I knew I had to make a move. I pondered law school and business school and eventually stumbled across the MSLB program. A two hour long phone call with the former program director and an application later, I made the best decision of my life. I wanted opportunity. I wanted a lasting career in sports. I wanted success. Mainly, I wanted an intramural championship. Shout out SLB Ballers 2018 Co-Rec Champions. Upon arrival in Arizona, I remember thinking to myself the words my mom always told me when I was growing up, school and sports. Yes, some mothers may give their daughters complex advice. My mom was different. She knew if I spent all of my time focused on school and playing sports, I wouldn't have time for the distractions. All she wanted was for me to get A's and score goals. Thank you, Dad, for being the calming factor throughout those formative high school years when I scored three goals instead of four, and for bringing me Royal Farms cookies every day after practice. Anyway, when I got here, I decided to revert back to my middle school self and live by my mom's words, school and sports. I wasn't here to make friends. I wasn't here to enjoy the golf courses. I was here to focus on school and sports. And whoa, did this change quick. First, what makes this program so unique and special is the people. This program has helped me realize the importance of meaningful relationships. From the top down, administration, faculty, and classmates, we all have one common interest, sports. But we are all so different in so many ways. Our differences it was, is what makes this all work. In the classroom, we learned to host a mega event from the woman who helped bring the Final Four to Phoenix. We learned the intricacies of pro sports from the general counsel of our local MLB team. We learned to negotiate from a combination of our school's very own athletic director, an MLB salary arbitrator, and the man who introduced hourly commission for agents. We learned the history of the MLB from the former commissioner himself, Mr. Alan Bud Selig. We learned to analyze case law. We literally had a course that took place at an LPGA event. So yes, I, did. I guess I did get to enjoy the golf courses. And we learned to market, to brand, and to generate revenue. Oh, hey there, boss. You need help filtering and organizing an Excel sheet? Don't worry, I know how to do that. Thank you, analytics class. This wide range of skills is just a few concepts we learned in the classroom taught by the best in the business. If I mentioned all of them, I would definitely go over my five minute time limit. However, it's the time out of the classroom that is just as valuable in this program. The faculty took the time to get to know us as individuals, to help us figure out career goals, develop us as people, connect us with professionals who could help us reach our goals, and ultimately open up doors of opportunity. Thank you for investing your time and energy into all of us. To my fellow students and friends, it wasn't always the times grinding away at another group project that I'm sorry that I was a total control freak over if you were ever in one of my groups that counts as my favorite memories. It was days sitting by the pool or getting destroyed in intramural softball or nights after a big ASU win making memories that will last a lifetime and realizing that it is possible to have fun and strive for success at the same time. Thank you MSLB for instilling in all of us a confidence I know that we will carry with us the rest of our lives. A confidence that will allow us to pursue opportunities without the fear of failure. A confidence to know that if we put forth our best effort, it will be good enough. A confidence to pursue dreams and break ceilings. While the only ceiling I'm breaking right now is the one in my home after I accidentally throw a football too high to myself in my living room, I can't wait to see what you all do in the future. I am confident that one day my classmates will be serving as athletic directors, running the MLB, heading up collegiate football scouting departments, directing marketing and branding for Adidas, serving the best talent in the world as agents, and negotiating sponsorship deals at the highest levels. 
I'm beyond excited to continue my journey right here at ASU as I work towards my JD beginning in fall 2020. I cannot wait to see you all again and celebrate the special accomplishment in person. But for now, I'll leave you with this. Forks up. Thank you, Hannah. Please welcome our Juris Doctor student convocation speaker, Morgan Gooden, for her remarks. She is also this class's John S. Armstrong Award recipient. Welcome, Morgan. Hello, graduates, family, friends, and faculty. I'm deeply honored to receive the John S. Armstrong Award and to have the opportunity to celebrate our achievements along with you today. Of course, when we sat down at orientation in August 2017 in the Great Hall, sweating through our suits from a combination of excitement, anxiety, and the 110 degree weather, we never imagined that this other bookend of our law school careers, graduation, would occur virtually via YouTube. And I look forward to the day, hopefully sooner rather than later, when we can gather to celebrate together in person. However, I believe that these last three years have equipped us to deal with uncertainty and taught us how to persevere. We've learned how to handle the pressure of cold calls, exams, the countless interviews for jobs and externships, and answering those questions in oral arguments. Now, we don't face the uncertainty of whether we'll come up on Professor Birch's flashcard list today, but instead we face uncertainty about when the bar exam may happen, what our future employment will look like, and the health of our loved ones. While we've honed skills that will serve us well in our future careers, I'm confident that it's the qualities of perseverance and hard work that were essential to getting us here today to graduation that will carry us through this next season. Of course, we can't celebrate our achievements today without thanking all of you here supporting the graduates. You are the ones who made this day possible. And I know that all of us owe a huge debt of gratitude to you. To the donors who generously supported our education, thank you. Thank you to the faculty who spent hours answering our questions, but who took on much more than just a responsibility for us learning the black letter law. Our faculty became invaluable mentors who advised and supported us in each next step of our careers and lives. To the lawyers in the Phoenix legal community who have served us in so many ways, as adjunct professors and as mentors in our jobs and our externships, thank you. I'd like to recognize Larry Hammond, who we lost earlier this year. Larry deeply impacted me and inspired me to serve others and I know his legacy at ASU with the Justice Project and far beyond have inspired countless others. And finally, to our friends and our family who have sacrificed so much over the past three years, we truly owe these degrees to you. On a personal note, I have to thank my husband for all the packed lunches, the back rubs, and the scrambled eggs you are the real MVP of my law school career. I know that none of us would have made it to this finish line today without the encouragement and the sacrifice of our friends and family. So thank you to everyone who has supported us. I hope to be in person with you all soon and congratulations to the graduates of the class of 2020. Thank you, Morgan. We will now move into our convocation addresses, starting first with our master's program speaker, Mr. Joe Garagiola Jr., special advisor to the president and CEO of the Arizona Diamondbacks, Derek Hall. He was previously senior vice president and general manager of the franchise from its inception through the 2005 season, helping guide the team to division titles in 1999, 2001, and 2002, as well as the first major championship for a sports franchise in the state of Arizona. He graduated from Georgetown Law, was partner at Gallagher and Kennedy, and also teaches sports law. Please welcome Mr. Joe Garagiola, Jr. Good morning. 
Let me begin by offering my congratulations to all of the graduates. Well, this is certainly not the graduation ceremony any of us could have envisioned. It should in no way detract from the magnitude of your accomplishment. And for that, I offer my congratulations. In thinking about what I wanted to say to you this morning, it occurred to me that, hard as it is to believe, I really think that out of this current situation will come two things that will be real positives for you as you advance in your careers in the sports industry. First is a, what I would call, heightened sense of perspective. You know, sports business is, is a business where things can be conflated into crises very quickly. A three-game losing streak is a crisis. A sore elbow, a torn ACL, this is a crisis. Well, you now know what a real crisis looks like. And so, someday in the future when a young colleague or subordinate bursts into your office desperate to give you the details of the latest crisis, you're going to be able to look at them and very calmly say, no, this is a problem. This is not a crisis. I know what a real crisis looks like, and believe me, this isn't it. And I will tell you that that ability to be a calming influence in the midst of chaos will be an extremely important thing and will make you a very valuable part of any organization that you're in. Second thing is this. In many respects, sports, the sports industry is no different from other industries in that change comes sometimes slowly and usually incrementally. Uh, after a long period of time, the old ideas become the new ideas um, the new ideas become the old ideas, and the cycle repeats itself. I think one of the outcomes of our current situation is that that playbook, that timeline, is out the window. Everything, everything about sports and the sports industry is going to have to be re-examined from the nature of our product itself, to how that product is presented, to how it's consumed, everything. So what does that mean for you? Well, it means that, for one thing, you don't come into this industry burdened, if I can use that word, with a lot of the old thinking, the old, well, this is the way it's always been done, because we know that in a lot of instances, the old way isn't going to work anymore. So you don't have to be retrained and re-educate yourself to throw all those ideas out because that's baggage you never had. So that's one good thing. What's the other good thing? I think now more than ever, there's going to be no such thing as a bad idea. Everything will be on the table. And that means that whether you've been in the business for 10 years or 10 minutes, you're going to be able to bring forward ideas and have them seriously considered because everything, everything has to be looked at. Um, what we knew about the sports business, the sports industry three months ago, a lot of that is just not useful knowledge anymore. So, it's, believe it or not, it's an exciting time. The business, the industry you're about to enter is going to have to reinvent itself in many ways. And I am confident, as you should be, that with the foundation you have put here in place at ASU, you are perfectly positioned to play a significant role in that reimagining. So again, congratulations and stay safe. Thank you, Mr. Garagiola. 
Next, please welcome our Juris Doctor and LLM Programs Convocation Speaker, Mrs. Cindy Hensley McCain, Chairman of the Board of the McCain Institute for International Leadership at Arizona State University. Here, she oversees the organization's focus on advancing character-driven global leadership based on security, economic opportunity, freedom, and human dignity. She is also the chairman of her family's business, Hensley Beverage Company, which is one of the largest Anheuser-Busch distributors in the nation. Cindy Hensley McCain has dedicated her life to improving the lives of those less fortunate throughout the world and is the wife of the late U.S. Senator John McCain. Please welcome Mrs. Cindy Hensley McCain. Thank you for inviting me to join you on this special day in these unusual times. An online convocation in the midst of a pandemic is a novel but still auspicious occasion. The achievements we recognize today are just as commendable as those celebrated in more ordinary times, maybe even more so given the challenges the pandemic has posed for students. It's a genuine privilege to add my voice to the chorus of congratulations to the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law's class of 2020 and to share a little bit of your and your family's joy. You have acquired a quality education in the law, which demanded considerable effort on your part. You deserve all the nice things people will say to you today. And when a more traditional commencement is held after public health care concerns abate. But today, I get to be one of the first to say to you, well done, and thank you for that privilege. These are unusual times marked by unprecedented disruptions in our way of life, by confusion and anxiety, by a sense that is so much that is familiar and reassuring has been lost and might be a long time in recovering. Whatever your hopes and plans were before earning your law degree have likely been affected in, to some extent. But have faith, your aspirations remain attainable. Pandemic or not, we're still living in the land of opportunity under the rule of law. You will have time and opportunity to put your academic attainments, your intellect and industry to good use. I have no doubt about that. This might sound like a tired cliche, but I hope many of you use the knowledge and skills you acquired here to make the world better. <clears throat> First and foremost, because the world really needs your help but also because nothing else you do in your life will be more satisfying than helping to make life better for others. There is nothing more liberating in life, my husband used to say, than serving a cause greater than your self-interest, a cause that might encompass you, but is not defined by your existence alone. John believed in serving worthy causes. It brought a happiness far greater than pleasure and goodness knows he lived experiences to prove it. Of all of his accomplishments, all of his adventures, all of his battles, won and lost, the thing that brought him the most satisfaction was defending the cause he cared about the most, respect for the dignity of all human beings possess in equal measure, no matter the circumstances they live in. He was never happier than when he was helping the good guys fight the bad guys to help the little guys. I hope many of you will lend your talents to making the world more peaceful, more just, more prosperous for others, and more respectful of human dignity. You will have many opportunities to do so. There are more summons to service in the world than there are takers. In a world plagued by war and poverty and injustice, a world with so many suffering children and so many other urgent missions, anyone can find a good cause that enlarges your own sense of worth and purpose. <clears throat> Life is an exciting adventure to John, him to all of it, even the bad times, and he wanted us to live our lives that way too. Be useful, he used to tell our kids when they asked him what they should do with their lives. Be useful. I wish you all the success in whatever endeavors you pursue, whatever journeys you make, wherever your interest and curiosity and hearts take you. I wish you a life of use usefulness and active conscience to guide you. 
When John was a prisoner of war, his captors offered to let him go home if he would confess that he had fought in, a, in an illegal war and condemned the government that had sent him there. He refused the offer once, twice, and a third time. After that, he was beaten until, until they broke his resistance and he made the confession that, he, that they had demanded, though he refused to go home before any of his fellow POWs. Before they resorted to those extreme measures, the political officer who had authority over the POW camps tried to entreat him into accepting their offer by assuring him no one would know of his disloyalty. They would keep it a secret. But I would know, John responded. I would know. A loud conscience is, conscience is the most precious thing any person can possess. We all fail sometimes to be the kind of people we ought to be some of us more than others. But the voice in your head that shouts, I will know, will summon us back to the right path. It spares us the misery of selfishness and a wasted life useful to no one but ourselves. These are strange and anxious times, but the promise of a better day remains. When we learn from our mistakes, put to good use our achievements, our talents, our knowledge, Follow our conscience and make another, better world than the one we inherited. You are the beginning of useful, satisfying lives. I envy you and I thank you for the privilege and the pleasure of sharing this occasion with you. Good luck to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. McCain. Please welcome Mr. Gregory Harris, president of the ASU Law Alumni Association and ASU Law alumnus from the class of 1983 for his remarks from our Alumni Association Board of Directors. Congratulations, graduates. My name is Greg Harris, and I'm the president of the Alumni Association at the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law. I know that each of you began your journey three years ago or less on a path that was begun by others some 50 years ago at the law school. And today, you mark not an end, but a new beginning. And let's face it, what an end and what a beginning. This is certainly a time of great reflection on the success that you are enjoying today. Success that you're enjoying along with your family, your teachers, your classmates, and your friends. And that success is, is due completely to the hard work that they and you have done. But it's also a time of thanks, a time of empathy, and a time of compassion. And it is a time for each of you to follow through on the promise that I know that each one of you made to yourselves and your families when you got here. To shine, to make the most out of the experience, to work hard, and to show grit and determination. And remember, if this were easy, anyone could have done it. But this was not easy, and what lies ahead will not be easy. But together, as a community, the challenges that we all face from this novel flow this issue of first impression, it can be, must be, and will be overcome. I urge you to use your legal training to look forward and to look back, to look forward at the problems that need to be solved and to look back for solutions that have worked. It is with great honor and appreciation that I greet you here today, virtually as the president of the Alumni Association. In any time, and especially in this time, I invite you to become involved and stay connected to this association and to the school, to your friends and to your teachers and to the administration. I urge you to take advantage of opportunities to network and to participate. You've had your friends and your connections that you had before you got to the law school and that you made here, and going forward is the opportunity to truly forge them and to make them stronger. But remember that the Alumni Association also exists for you to forge new connections and along the way to support the school, its future students, and its future graduates. So please accept my welcome to each of you, to all the graduates from the MLS, LLM, and JD programs. Welcome to the association, and please accept my invitation to you to become active participants in the association's work to support one another and the legal community and the community as a whole. Please remain connected to your education, to this institution, and to our community, which have been and will be there for you throughout your work and service, and all that follows. Let me close with a, one small point as you celebrate your graduation. 
Think of this as my gift to you to help you stay on track as you pursue your dreams and your careers. There always have been problems that need to be solved. Spotting problems is easy. Coming up with sol solutions, taking time to think about the problems that need to be solved and best ways to go about them is a challenge. So my, my suggestion to you, my gift to you, is that whenever you spot a problem, identify a solution and then identify those that you can work with to, to make it, it possible to solve the problem that you've identified in order to make it happen, not just for you, but for the entire community. So let me close with this, with my offer of congratulations to you. I look forward to the chance to meet with you soon at an Alumni Association event. Please be well and please stay healthy. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Congratulations once again to the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law Class of 2020. Please welcome back Dean Sylvester for his closing remarks. Well, I, I hope you've enjoyed this rather extraordinary virtual student graduation event. You'll notice I'm trying not to call it your convocation because we really meant what I started off with, that we want to have an in-person convocation, all in robes, sweating, you know, and all of the things that we've always done for you sometime, hopefully this summer or next fall. And so even though this has been a wonderful event and I hope you've really enjoyed hearing from our speakers and your fellow students, this isn't the end. We're gonna see you back here again and I really hope every single one of you can make it. And as I've said, if you can't, let us know and we'll do our absolute best to come to you. As you reflect back on this whole event and think forward to what's to come next, I hope once again, you'll take that second and think about your family and your friend and your mentors and all of the people that you're graduating with and remember to reach out and thank them. Everybody at the moment is struggling a little bit and you know that every single time somebody reaches out to you and says thank you or says I'm thinking of you, it makes a huge difference. While we here at the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law, I assure you, are thinking of all of you and we look forward to seeing you here again very soon. Congratulations on what has now become your first alumni event at the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law. And rather than ending with just me, who you've heard from far too much over your time here at the law school, we thought it would be a lot better to end with a video that you all created. Little video shorts and hellos and thank, you, thank yous from all of you. And so from all of us at the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law, to all of you, congratulations on graduating in the class of 2020 from the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law and enjoy your classmates' videos. I wouldn't trade my time at ASU Law for the world. I wanna thank professors like Stephanie Jarvis for always answering my questions and for showing me what a real shoe collection should look like. I wanna thank my friends for being awesome. First day friends, you know who you are. And thanks to my parents for not thinking moving to Arizona on a whim was completely crazy. Thanks. I will forever be grateful for all of the opportunities I had while being part of SLB. Thank you to all the professors, but especially Sam and Stephanie for allowing me to pursue a career in sports. Thank you to all my friends that became family, and especially to my family and my parents for always dreaming this dream right along with me. Hey class of 2020, I just want to say how proud I am of each and every one of you. You guys inspire and motivate me every single day. And a special thank you to the professors who coached us through it. Sharf, Becker, Minor, Larson, can't thank you guys enough, I'm so grateful. And congratulations 2020, we did it! I just wanna say congratulations to everyone. I really wish we could be in person together right now. I miss everyone. And I want you to know how much it's meant for me to be able to spend the last three years with such amazing people. I want to thank the Buses and the Alumni Association for helping me fund my education. And I want to thank all the staff, faculty, and especially my fellow students for this amazing ride. Good luck on your finals and in your new careers. You guys are amazing.
Hey everyone, I just wanted to thank Professor Kappas for being an absolute legend. Uh, thank you to Tammy for all the help you've provided me over the past two years. To Jake Derman, thanks for being the coolest kid I've ever met. And congratulations everyone. Happy graduation, MSLB family made it. I'm so grateful for all of you, uh, for the friendships that I gained. I'm thankful to the professors and the wisdom that they gave us, the experiences that they shared with us. Um, this is such a unique and awesome program and I'm so grateful for it. I am praying that each of you have a bright and blessed future. Happy graduation. Hi guys, it's Sam. I just wanted to say thank you so much to my friends and family um, for supporting me this entire year, as well as some of the professors that we had, uh, specifically Professor Jarvis, Professor uh, McIntosh, and Professor Mokwa. Thank you guys for always supporting me and, and helping me out in the uh, best way possible. Hi, I'm Dorian Reyes. I just want to thank the school and the professors for making this a great experience. Thank you. I want to wish the best of the luck to all class of 2020 and I, I know that you will be great in the future. I'll hear the, the greatest word from you out there and for sure you guys I think you have we have a duty so our duty is to honor higher and higher to raise higher and higher the ASU school uh, the, the law school Sandra all day uh, Sandra De O'Connor. This school for me is the best and I've learned a lot. Hi class of 2020, we made it even under the circumstances. I just want to thank Professor Kappas, Professor Edelman, Professor Langenfeld and Rice Muhammad for all your continued guidance and support. And I want to thank my mom, my dad, my sisters, my fiance, my aunt Pat and my fiance's family all the way across in Australia. I would not be here without you guys. Thank you so much. I love you guys. My name is Skylar with the MSLB program and I want to say thank you to my classmates. I couldn't have done this without you guys and thank you to my professors because I've grown and learned so much in the last two years from all of you. Special shout out to Stephanie and Aaron for the interview prep hours we've had and the ones to come and last just thank you to my friends and family for supporting me through this journey. Hello, my name is Norma Abel. I'm so excited to be part of the MLS graduating class of 2020. I'd like to thank all the faculty and all the staff. I would like to thank Professor Edgel, Professor Jackson, Professor Revere, Professor Beckman. Thank you all so much. I really enjoyed your class. Thank you all for your hard work. I wish you continued success and I wish you well. This concludes our spring 2020 virtual convocation for Master of Legal Studies, Master of Sports Law and Business, Master of Laws, and Juris Doctor graduates of the Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law at Arizona State University. We look forward to seeing you soon, and on behalf of all of our ASU Law faculty and staff, congratulations, Class of 2020.